Hey guys, I think I'm live. I know we've had a few hiccups previously, but I think we're okay. Give me a wave or hit that thumbs up so I know that everything's working your end for you. Just wait for a few people. Hi Erica. Do you have your goodies ready? I hope you do. My feathers are molting by the looks of it. How are you? Well, I hope. Hi. My two naughties are on first, so this should prove for an interesting evening. Behave. I'll tell you what I do need. I need my Molotov. I need to make sure that that's shaken up and ready. So I'll probably end up repeating, but um, while we're waiting for a few people to come on, uh, we're going to be doing some feathers. And over the past few years, when I've gone and visited various zoos or um, bird sanctuaries, places like that, I've tried to acquire myself some feathers and um, I've actually not done a bad job over the last few years so I, this is a small snippet of the type of feathers that I've managed to collect over the years. Um, this one here in this bag is a very special one because it came from this incredible owl that they did a display for in Knock Hatch and <laughs> Maggie, bless her cottons, he put this up and said, does anybody want this? And I don't think anybody heard him. So she was like, me, me. And she got it for me. So yeah, love her for that. Um, hi, Catherine. I will try and behave. Or did you mean art goodies? <laughs> I'm making no, no, you wouldn't, would you? So what we have is, and I'm not going to remember, it's a variety of chicken, chicken, chicken feathers. Um, we have a magpie feather. I'm pretty sure it's... Oh, no, it might not be, actually. It might be with one of those ducks. And I don't know if there, if my camera's going to pick it up. But it's one of those iridescent ones. And I've got a couple of these. So I thought we could have a play at trying to get some of that iridescence. Now, underneath, it doesn't have it. It only has it on top. So I've pulled the feathers out, one to give me a bit of inspiration for shapes, two for colours and three for patterns. So I thought if I show you how my process is and works, then it gives you a chance to have a go. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick share outs while we're still waiting for people to hop on. My typing skills need serious improvement today. Okay. No, don't need that, don't need that. So you can either use um I mean, you can use the cheapest watercolour paints you want, actually. They don't have to be anything substantial. Um, even the ones from the pound shop, anything like that. But today I'm going to go through some of the Spectrum Noir ones because that's what I like to paint with. Okay. Let's 
let's get the share out i won't share in my group but i will share on my page so erica who's awesome at sharing my videos for me i'm sure we'll pop it in the page in the group okay now there is one other place i need to share and that is the hsn okay Hi, Joanne. Hi, Pam. Hi, Vicky. Okay, so something really freaky happened today. And, oh, shush, Bixby. My phone's on silent. Yet, Bixby still manages to wake up in the middle of it. Anyway, we'd literally been out most of the day and went and got some pumpkins. In fact, they're still in the back of the car. Um, and we were driving home, minding our own business, and we parked up literally right outside the house and the next thing i know my window has just completely exploded all over me completely shattered and as you can imagine the girls were completely freaked out and uh yeah just complete you know when you just like when you drop a can out of a cupboard that, and you go and catch it and you get that instant, my, my heart's going to actually blow it out of my chest in a minute. It was a bit like that. Um, so, yeah, that was fun. Not expensive. Anyway, so the whole point of me showing you the feathers is whenever you go for a walk, um, whether you go to the park or you're just walking the kids to the school or you're taking the dogs for a walk and you find some feathers, it's worth bringing them home if you do bring them home keep them in a air sealed air sealed airtight bag so this one for example is in a like a poly bag um because it stops any of the they get like feather mites i think it is and it eats the feathers um i know that from other feathers i haven't done this to and they've just completely disintegrated so when i spoke to can't remember who i think i looked it up actually they said about keeping them in airtight bags so Again, these are more of the ones that I have. So I have quite a few, but I've just picked out some of the ones just to give us some ideas on shapes. So I'm hoping I'll draw mine a little bit heavier, but that's what we're going to be using it for. So this one, we're going to get some nice ideas for colour and the nice long shape. I'm probably not going to draw this one, but it's already falling apart, so... I don't know. I don't know if we do anything with that one. As I say, these are just out really for inspiration. But if you're not sure about how to draw feathers, instead of just doing your standard basic feather shape, you can pick this up and you can see where you've got little imperfections. Like this side's all fluffy. This side is quite firm and quite well kept together. And then you've got like the little brown patches and things on there. Um, thank you, Erica. Um, and then you've got like little ones, let me turn the autofocus on, then you've got little ones like this, which again are just little ways of getting a bit of inspiration. So you have got more of your classic feather shape, but then you've got ones like this, which is a gorgeous shape. Again, I think this was a duck one and whatever this covering is, is really solid on this. This would have made a perfect quill. Um, but again, it's a good example for a shape and a colour. Again, when you look at this, you've got your fluff on the bottom and then you've got that beautiful pattern on the top. So these are the ones that we're going to try and replicate today. And I'm going to show you some of the, the best ways to do it. Again, you've got a completely different shape and you've got another shape there. Again, with that iridescence, I don't know whether that's going to pick up just about. Hi, Leslie. In fact, that picks up quite well. So you've got loads of greens and a bit of blue in there. Ah, never throw them away. Always keep them, as I say, in a sealed bag. This one is one big long feather. But again, it gives you another idea of shape. So these are the shapes that we're going to have a play with today. So let's put them to one side and I'll get some paper out. 
and we'll start with some more of the basic shapes so again we're using my one of my favorite watercolor papers which is the spectrum noir watercolor paper it's the premium watercolor pad 300 gsm those of you that watch me all the time know that i use it all the time uh, 9 by 12 which I keep forgetting whenever I do my sample so I go and put it in an A4 envelope and then I remember it doesn't fit so I have to keep remembering that okay so let's just grab a sheet oh feathers going everywhere no oh camera's having a hissy fit hang on there we go so the first one we're going to have a go at is this one so this is the one we're going to play with. I'm going to zoom you in a bit so you can get an idea of sketch. It may go a little bit darker on the camera and I'll try and get in. We're not going to go really silly with it. We're just going to keep it really basic. So if you are drawing along with me, if I go too fast, just let me know. But again, um, you can always rewind and watch later on. I am hoping I've changed the bit rate today and I'm hoping that we don't have any issues. So fingers crossed. need to get some of that where's the best place off the crafters companion website um they've got a birthday event going on at the moment as well so um if you spend over a certain amount you get freebies so you can't grumble at that can you um okay so the first thing we're going to do really is just draw the middle section and we're just going to do the most basic of lines and just keep it like that so this is going to be our very top i'm going to extend that down a bit and all i'm going to do is just mark out where can you see that you can't really see that can you let me get it a bit darker can you see that just about let me make it stronger so all i'm going to do is mark out where the fluffy area is going to be And just draw it up like that in fact that could probably do with being a bit thinner like so not the best of eraser but it will do and then this area up here has a lot of feathering that goes out on the top i'm going to show you a little technique of how to get that oh now you're asking um i have a feeling this was from a chicken Coffee man, can you remember? Mm. Were these from the chickens? Yes. They were, weren't they? Yeah, they were from chickens. But I can't remember what type. There's a centre, not near where we live, but a, about 40 minutes drive. And uh, it's a rare breed centre. So they have a lot of rare chickens. So we're quite lucky that we get quite a lot of feathers from there. So, so we're pretty much going to just continue on from the same width all the way up just draw it up and then that's going to be that in fact I might bring I'm worried about going off the top of the page so I'm going to bring that down okay so that's the, the basic shape you're aiming for and anything that you draw is really made up from basic shape so what I want to do today is take the stress out of those that feel that they have to have this skill to be able to do this type of artwork and I want to show you today that actually that's not the case you can you can really achieve it quite easily um I'm not necessarily either going to do it the proper colors I might just have a bit of a play I've got with me my spectrum noir sparkle pens my aqua tint pens I also have my metallic pots and I have my sparkle pots so I might actually have a punt at doing it in the sparkle pots um, and I've also got a tub next to me if I want to just put some colors in a tub so I can work straight from that rather than the pen um, so I want to have a, a variety of things. So I've got my Molotow masking pen. If 
you don't have a masking pen it's absolutely fine you can use any masking fluid it doesn't have to be a masking pen if you don't have any of this that's fine i'll show you for those of you who again who are new to watching me i'll show you a little trick um i might actually have to get coffee man to grab me a couple of cotton buds um but there's a way of what we call a thirsty brush to be able to remove color once you've put it down so that's another alternative to create your dots so if you want um let me know in the comments if you want i can show you both the monotone version and the version where if you don't have any masking fluid how we can take the color away so just let me know in the comments <laughs> you were wrong although we do have a woodpecker in the uh, in the woodland behind us i'm worried about what it oh don't you start woman and so it begins looks a bit like a guinea fowl feather it was there's a variety of chickens that have those massive fluffy heads and i think it was off of one of those but again i can't be 100 percent sure so again, just pop in the comments below if you want to see both techniques for getting the um, dots. So I am going to try and be a little bit precise with how we go. So we've, the dots actually do go in a pattern. So they go up towards the outside, but they do go in this formation. So I'm just putting a little bit, they, they do get a bit bigger as well as you come up. One, two, 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 two. I want to put one there, but it's going to be out of alignment. And what I might do is just eke that up a little bit. I'm going to keep doing this because on the centre piece there is a little bit of the odd like so. Now we need to allow that to dry. Yes please, both techniques. Yes please, both. Okay, right, while this is drying I should draw out a second next to it didn't really think about that did i um let's go over so we're just gonna pretty much same thing and we'll leave that as is reminds me of a tongue actually are you in the middle of a battle? Yeah, Are you able to fly up and not? I need a couple of cotton buds, sorry. Yeah, okay. I might not even need cotton buds. I, I might just be able to use the paintbrush, but I want to have um, both just to make sure that you're getting as much information out of me as you possibly can, which is always a good thing. So I'm going to use my Da Vinci brushes as well as my Daily Rowney. I always want to say Derwent, but they're not the Daily Rowney. I just remembered something, don't know why, but I used to love spotted dip. Oh, I can't stand raisins. Ugh. Okay, so what we're going to be doing, we're going to be painting what you call wet on wet. So our paper's going to be wet to begin with. So first of all, I need to shake that. If you're using the Spectrum Noir Metallics and the Sparkles, because they have mica in them, um, you will probably see it swimming around the bottom there. When you have mica in them and they sat for a long time, the mica all gathers at the bottom. So you have to make sure that they're, thank you, that they have a really, really good shape. Otherwise you don't get the sparkle through the image. That's completely out of focus. There we go. OK, 
okay so first of all we are going to grab my i'm using the da vinci because they're purposely watercolor brushes so they hold a lot of water um and we're just going to go over the whole thing within the lines that we've made so don't go over those lines anything water based will only go where the water is wet so if you put water based straight onto dry paper it will just sit where you put it but if you put it on wet then it will travel across flinging the paintbrush around and it's wet it will only travel across where the water is oh, itchy nose every time i do a live so i'm going to grab it's here i'm going to try and put them both on screen and we're just going to dip it in and we're just going to pop it on and then you'll see it travel you see all that traveling it's doing and it's expanding all the way up to the feather that's too close you can't get the old feather in we'll do that and it just keeps everywhere it's wet it will just keep traveling So you can decide to let it travel and leave it. Or if you want to add some interest while your brush is still wet, get another brush or a pen or a pencil. I find it better to use this than your finger. We're just going to add some doodle mess around it let's get that lid on and then what we're going to do is the very tip of your brush which is another reason ideally why you want to be using um, proper watercolor brushes because a lot of the like the round brushes tend to have quite a pointed tip so where we have this these lines that go out across the top of the feather just I don't know how well you can see this, but hold your paintbrush directly upwards. And rather than move your wrist, I don't know if you'll see this action, just move your fingers instead. And then we know that this all wants to be fluffy. So I'm just going to push and pad out a little bit just to give it some texture. That's all we're going to do on the fluffy part of it, just, just to give it a bit of texture. Then we are going to, I'm wondering if I'm going to need a smaller brush. I might be able to just get away with it. Then where we've got the feather, probably going to need a smaller brush. We're just going to flick from the middle of our feather up. I'm going to swap over to a smaller one. Try and get a bit of excess water off that. I'm just using my skin to get the excess water off. Okay, and again, we're just flicking up. You'll see you get some really nice, fine detail lines. You want to turn your paper you can and just keep an eye on the direction on your original feather so mine are all going up none are going in any other direction so it's hard to get a flick on that way so let's just keep If you really, really want to get fine detail in there, I guarantee I'm not going to find it because I always, always lose this brush whenever I want it. Am I 
going to find you. I'm not going to find you, am I? Typical. Um, there is a name for it. I'm sure they're just called lining brushes. But they're the ones with the really long... I guarantee I'll find it as soon as I come off this live feed. You get the ones with the really, really long bristles at the end of it. But I'm just going to grab a really fine, fine point and just see if I can extend some of the really fine ones out a bit more. And again, all I'm doing is flicking with my fingers, my wrist. I'm not even flicking with my wrist, actually. I'm really just flicking with the fingers. I'm using my middle finger just to push the brush out in that technique. I just want to get some just little finer points. Like so. Finer the better, really, but I'm going wherever is easiest. So we want to get that line down the middle, but actually on the feather, there is no white line until you get down to here. So what we do is, again, using the thirsty brush technique, is either get a dry brush or a clean wet brush. I personally prefer to use a clean wet brush and you wanna take, when you dip it in, either get a bit of kitchen roll or just use the back of your hand to take any excess off. Just get as much excess off as you can. So it needs to be damp rather than sopping wet. And then what we do is the actual feather itself, the core of it, I don't know what it's called, is still dark it's the bits along the side so you can still see the sketch lines hopefully that you have made so you just grab your brush and run along side and you only go up where your fluffy section is so if you've got a brush like this for example you can go a bit of heavy pressure when you're down this end and then release pressure as you go up towards the top and it thins out that line and then we just go and do that on the other side until we start lifting. Hopefully you can see that it's quite a shine actually on where that glitter is. It will start lifting out that colour. You might have to go over it a few times. So if it's not working first time, that's absolutely normal. So I'm going from the top down this time. So light pressure and then I'm pushing down as I come down the stem of the feather and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for that to dry and then I'm going to put a little darker line down the middle you can't see it because it's reflecting all the glittery stuff there you go you can see it's starting to pull that color out so again part of the reason why I said or asked hubby to bring the cotton pad pad uh, down is to just gently pull some away now you have to be careful if you're going to be using a cotton bud because it doesn't matter how tough your paper is if it's wet it'll eat the paper so I'd prefer it if you used a paintbrush but this is an alternative so ideally I need to wait for that to dry before I go on with anything else So I'm going to let that dry and then we'll do this other technique. So let's do a different colour and let's do a non-sparkle version so it's easy for you to see. Let's go with, let's go with the aqua tint purple. And again, you want to work wet on wet. So you want to wet your paper. Still got a little bit of colour left on that. And because the aqua tints are so intense in their colour, I personally would just pop a little 
blob down on the bottom you can just give it a gentle squeeze let me move my hand out of the way and just expel some of that colour down there we go and then just push the colour around where you want it focus yep yeah. Again, we're just going to do some little pushing of the paintbrush. That's all we're doing just to add texture and interest around that bottom area. And then we're going to get the flick happening along the top. Ideally you want to do all this before you try and get your spots in because if you get your spots in and then you do this you're going to be dragging paint over the area in which you need to keep um, light or white. So I'm going to swap over now to my Diddy brush. No, that wasn't it. It's there. And we're just going to get some very... If I do it like this, you should be able to see without my hand being in the way. Get some finer lines going out. And I'm doing it really quickly. It's easier and more natural to do this quickly than try and be too methodical about it. Because as soon as you start being methodical, that's when things start going in the wrong direction and then you get really, or I do, really stressy about it. So yeah, keep the flow really, if you run out of or it's starting to dry just grab a bit from a wet area and then just keep brushing out now bear in mind unlike standard watercolor that you would get in um, a Windsor and Newton or a Daily Rowney or something like that these are dye based they're not pigment based so they stain a lot quicker so you may, you know, you're not going to get dead white colour like you would if you were to use a standard watercolour. So wet the tip of your cotton bud or Q-tip. And then you can just go in, just keep it on there for a little bit. And then lift up and then you can see that you've got your dots. It's a really nice, subtle way of creating spots. The other way to do it, if you wanted more of a sporadic look, is just to tap a few drops of um, clear water on the top of that, and that will do the same job. So if I show you with this one, so if I pop a bit on there, I'm going to pop a bit there and there. In fact, let's just make this one sporadic. You can see it takes away that colour instantly. The cotton bud gives you more of a controlled decolouring, for lack of a better way of explaining it. Whereas going straight on with plain water, it gives you more of a organic, I suppose, feel to it. Um, but I really actually like that technique I think it works really really well what do you guys think don't be afraid to ask any questions either free, feel free feel free to come and ask questions so I'm just going to pull out some color again either side as we came down and I might even where's our feather I might even to try and reproduce some of that fluff I might just pull from the middle out just again to add it some some texture to it so 
So again, we need to allow that to dry, but we've already got this real natural bit in the middle there without having to do any hard work. It really is as simple as that. So, you know, I really want you guys to have a go because I'd love to see you grow in a, in a bit more confidence when it comes to using the watercolour products, whether it be Spectrum Noir or whether it be whatever you've got at home. As I say, even just a pound shop, doesn't matter, really doesn't. Hi Tony. Yes, I like that because I think it f it feels more natural. I'm hoping I'm not going to rub all the sparkle off. I shouldn't do, but we'll see. Right, let me get my little eraser and just pull off. Oh, just use your fingers. Uh, so this is more of our control. Ah! I was a bit rough. Paper's still wet. Don't make that mistake. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Let's bring the rubber back out. <laughs> By the way, if you've never used masking fluid before, it is a form of latex. So if you have a latex allergy, using an eraser is a really good way of getting away with it. But Basically, I haven't left that long enough to dry. So that's my error. There's more on there, but I don't want to ruin the paper any further, so. It was meant to look like that, I promise. I promise, Governor. Hmm, what colour are we going to have? The I'm feeling a bit of brown happening here. Yeah, it's a really good way of pulling out colour, and I use it actually quite a lot. And when you want something, as I say, more, um, even more natural, then you can just really look at just doing the same tapping technique that I used on the outside of here. I'm wondering if brown's gonna be a bit of an odd color. I'll tell you what I'm gonna use. No, am I? I don't know now. Let's see what the gold's gonna be like. This is spun gold, which is the aqua tint. I have a feeling it might be too light, but I thought the color combination might work. It's ah, a bit wishy-washy. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? Let's go with purple. Let's make it a bit stronger. All the time there's still the tiniest bit of dampness to your paper, you will get feathering. Um, literal term so feathering is where you it happens with alcohol markers um wet acrylic paints um watercolor paints any water base so feathering is where your product seeps out to the side so it feathers out to the side anything that's regarded as bleed is anything that soaks through the paper so it goes literally through the the paper so you can see it on the other side actually really like that the way that's done its thing so you can either leave it as simple as that entirely up to you how far you want to go with your feathers so you can keep it really simple and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the rest of that purple up and I don't want it too wet so I'm going to take some paint and um, water off my brush I'm going to steal it from there and I'm going to come down and join it in the middle it's better to do it in one stroke but I have got the shakes today after the car incident uh, it's a uh, 
my hands are still a little bit unsteady. So I'm going to just do some, I don't know, some just sporadic, that's my word of the evening, grabbing some ink out of that area and just making little shapes, I suppose, some little wispy shapes in the, what would be the fluffy area. You're probably even barely going to see it actually down the camera. I don't think you can see it at all. And then I'm going to pull some up. Into that as well. Let's do the same. This side you might, might see it a bit better. Maybe not. Just waving my brush about basically. Just any direction really, just to you can just about see it this side. Just to give it a bit of interest, really. That's what you're looking for. And then again just a little bit more water. And then pulling it out a bit. Sporadic organic. <laughs> oh dear. There we go. Um, by the way, I'm going to be running a giveaway. There's going to be two giveaways, one for my Patreons. They are going to be in the chance of winning a set of 12 Classiques Spectrum Noir markers. And those that are not on my Patreons, but are still part of my family. Uh, my dudettes and my doodlers, as we're still trying to work out some puns happening here. Um, you're going to be able to get hold of if you win a set of six so um, keep your eyes peeled for that anyway so that is our take our loose take on our chicken feather now you can go to town a bit more if you want to all I wanted to do tonight was show you basic techniques um, to get you going so you can then go on and do anything after that in fact I'm gonna be naughty actually I am yeah let's let's do it I am going to I've got a tub here and in this tub I'm going to squeeze a little bit of ink how much have we got I want to show you another technique and you can get hold of these as cheap as chips. I don't know if any of you have used glass dipping pens before but the the tints and the pots work like magical wands of I don't know just gorgeousness with these things. Um, so I want to show you, what I might do is just add a bit of water, just to water it down a bit so it's not quite so strong in pigment. Mix that up. Okay, so all we're going to do is I'm going to tilt. So I've got a puddle and I'm going to dip my pen in Wait for it to work its way up the channel, so we're about halfway up, which is great. Knock any excess off. And I'm going to use this pen to add those details that I wanted to add in earlier. So again, this is another technique. You can use it and have to use it, but it's quite a fun one to have a play.
these are little loose ones that come out of the edge let me zoom you in a bit so you can do some little loose ones that come out the edge You want them in all directions because you want them to look like the fluff that they were. You don't want them to have necessarily any order. So when we get up to where it divides into the more structured portion, you can then, if I turn rather than try and lean over everything you can then just flick some darker lines I don't know how well you can see that just following up the direction that we went in previously Now I'm going over my dots, but I just wanted to give you the idea of the technique. Strengthen that line down the middle. As with all watercolours, they're going to dry lighter than when you put them when you put them straight on. So if we do this on our other feather. going in the other direction so I don't have to lean over so you can see but again it's just another technique that you can use with these pots or the pens or any inks you can even use them I'm sure with the alcohol inks I haven't tried that yet so if you've got the um, reinkers, you could probably use them for that as well. You can see the ink lasts quite a long time on these. Anyway, I'm playing, so we're going to crack on with another one in a minute. So when you zoom out you get much more of a detail so you can leave it as basic as you want or you can really go to town it's it's um, entirely up to you they are gorgeous pens and i don't think i paid any more than about four quid um the usual places you can go you can go um wish ebay aliexpress um there's loads of other places that you can get them from so worth having a look have you not oh you need to come and have a play because they are they are magical i've done so much with these you'll see soon ish i don't know when i can but you'll see soon ish but um let me grab so if you are i'm not but if you are a uh, hand letterer they're they're perfect they're just gorgeous um, okay, so you see, there we go. If I keep it out of focus, you can see how much shimmer you get out of that pot. That's why the camera is struggling to pick it up because it's really, really lush, <laughs> basically. Okay, so we've done our chicken feather. Let's put that in there, keep it safe. Should we have a go at the duck feather? This one, this iridescent one. See if we can achieve some of... I don't know that I'm going to achieve iridescence because I don't have all the colours, but to give you an idea of how we could, maybe. So if I... Let's try and be... so again we're going to take on board the shape of this feather so we're going to look at it decide that so we're going to go let's do a hole so we're going to go straight up 
and this feather the line comes more over here so there's more as you come up at this this end of the feather you can use those pens with any inks any watercolor paints as long as you've got what you would consider like a pot of color like a pot of ink it can seep up um into the pen cavity so let me see if i can show you so can you see all the ridges in the glass in the glass nib what happens is is when you dip the ink in they run up each of the gullies um again i'll, I'll be able to show you more examples later on i can't show you at the moment but i have used this quite a lot lately um but it's amazing for adding detail so it's really really good might get that focused okay so we've got nice rounded so we're just going to keep the shape really simple we're going to come up and it comes out further this side than it does the other side so it's got like a bit of a kink i suppose so let's chop that there bring that round and then it runs the same until you start coming up and then it starts getting a bit thinner as we come up towards this side now what i want to do is i want to pick out you can't see it very well because the lighting's so goddamn crap in this den at the minute but there's individual sections in here that i want to pick out so we put it next to each other we've got one section here that sits like so and we've got like a gap in there and then we've got another one that sits out and then we've got another one that sits out into here too and then we've got loads of lovely wispy bits which is what we can use that pen for at the bottom here and then again we've got a couple of areas and you don't have to copy the form of the feather at all you can go to town and, and do whatever you want um, but if you're looking at getting started at doing this type of thing observing the feathers and just essentially copying their shape and imperfections that's how you're going to get started so let me come down on the so you can see the outline that I've drawn. So that's the outline that we're going to go with. Okay, I have an awful feeling I am coming down with something because I've been fine all day and now my head and I've gone really flush. In fact, I probably am as red as the camera is picking me up. Have I missed any questions? If I've missed any questions, um, if you're not able to comment on the YouTube video itself, I'll come and find any comments. Um, but please don't be afraid to ask any questions if you do have any. I'm happy to go through everything I can, if indeed I can. So, yeah. Okay, so you have the green, your black. Almost galaxy, isn't it? Your green. Let me go and grab another green. Or shall I use... Let me, no, let me go and grab another green. Let's attempt, let's make a galaxy feather. Let's just do it, shall we? So I've got a mix of tints and sparkle, which is probably not, they do work really well, but Okay, so we've got green i did bring the blue but i don't think we're going to need it we've got the pink and we need the purple and then we need the black now, i do have the black aqua tint with me so that will save some time and again we're going to work on wet i'm not going to erase any lines because i want you to be able to see this as much as possible so i seem to have used 50 different brushes for some reason Let me clean the pen off. The pen just needs a whoosh around some water and it completely cleans that nib out. Look, it's all nice and clean now. 
Okay, so we want, where's my big brush? I literally used you five seconds ago. There we go, that'll do. I have got two water pots here. It's always worth when you do this sort of thing, especially with Spectrum products, because they are so intense in their colour, it's worth having two pots. You have your dirty pot and your clean pot. So you go from your dirty when it gets really dirty, and then you go back into your clean pot, just so it stops any, like I'm doing here, any colour transference. But I didn't bother going into my clean pot, which is why you can see the colour. So I'll go into my clean pot. I might do that again. So again, we're just going to saturate the area in which we want the colour to flow. This could go two ways, either really pants or really good. So we'll see. Now you don't want to go in with your black first. You want to go in with your colours first. So we're going to do, we're very green along this side. So let's get some green down. So you can see you get quite a good colour payoff when you come straight off the pen, but it will desaturate your pen eventually. It will draw the colour out, so just bear that in mind. You may just need to give it a little bit of a squeeze if you want to get extra colour down, but this is the only time you should be squeezing these pens. There we go. Um, otherwise, you'd keep them completely normal. So we have purple up here. We want to work fairly quickly. And then we've got a bit of pink. The only trouble with pink and green is it makes a really horrible brown. Let's get a little bit up there. And we've got a bit down here. And then the rest is your black. So we're going to squeeze. You're going to see it's going to push that colour away. We don't want any more colour than that really. We're going to use our brush to manipulate the rest of it. So a little bit strong down there. The thing with their blacks is you have to bear in mind that they are proper, proper black. They're not ones that go really wishy-washy afterwards. So you can push that pink for example there and if you want more pink then go and add more pink again if you want to let's show you the thirsty brush again let's get as much black out of that as possible we can just black is a really strong dye so it's not going to work as effectively i warn you now um, let's show you the so if I splatter with just water and then leave it. So let's get this pink and purple spread out. Get the black up here. Spread that green. And we had some bits that sort of merged out, didn't we? On here really love where that pink's just that little hint of pink love that brush isn't strong enough so again we can just draw out the color and draw in any detail that we want to add in Where is it? It's in front of me. So we need to bring that up a bit. And that one. It's green. Very Halloween-y. So again, if I show you, if I did this on the green, it would draw out the colour. I don't know whether you can see that. It draws out the colour very easily. But on the black, because the black is so strong, you need a lot more of it to do the same job. It can still be done. So you'd need to leave that, basically, to... Um, I hate using that word, so stop using it. To allow it to draw any colour up. Oh, that purple's so yummy.
it's so dark. There we go, that helps me get out of the way. So you can also grab your tissue and where you've put in those blobs of water, you can then come along and then you can pull some of that colour off. So you get this real galaxy looking feather. So what you want to do is let's grab, let's grab that purple I had. And we're going to grab these sections that I said stick out and just start drawing them in. Oh, it's done a really nice, can you see where it's done that flick out? I might do that. If I do that here. just need to do some feather shaping Um, you can see the sh uh, I don't know whether you can see that shimmer you can see the shimmer from the it's totally looking like space right now I'm loving it like you've got that burst of light coming through from the nebula you can add spots three ways or two ways I suppose let it dry and add some more tapping. Um, I have an awful feeling I'm not going to find it. Um, I've got Daily Rowney acrylic. I need to find it. It's acrylic ink. Those of you that have followed me for ages know all about it. Oh, hang on a minute. Mm. Um, yeah, it's like... Um, semi-translucent though that's the only thing so i'm going to use a mixture of the jelly roll because it's got a nice fine tip and the posca paint pen so it really depends on what you like to use so we're basing it off the shape of this feather which as i say has that iridescence and we're pulling on that to give us this nice spacey galaxy theme might be a bit wet still let's just try it ideally I want my ink because the ink gives you much more of a guess what word I'm going to use organic <laughs> um, it gives you a much more organic feel so we're also going to use this to get in some of those details that we drew in earlier depending on how dark yours is you may not see them but you get a bit of a rough idea from where you've left these gatherings and pokey outy bits because that's my technical term apparently ink's gone it's really frustrating right, let's get my posca pen out <laughs> throw it across the desk okay we're just gonna the posca is always brighter when you first put it on than when it dries widen the feather bit down the bottom here as well I 
Just had a massive thud come from upstairs. So God only knows what they're doing, considering how tired they are. You might need to check on them. Bill and Bob. There we go. Thought someone would be down. Well, maybe Daddy can help. Sorry. Yeah, so you'll see it's probably starting to dry a lot duller. Um, i tell you what I am going to do because we want to give it some more sparkle. I'm going to... Thank you. Just get a little bit of paint down here. Just a little bit because when I come in with my brush it will pick that up so I can then get quite a lot out of it that's why these products last so long because they're just you get a lot of bang for your buck as they say I'm going to go in with the dark purple as well and we're just going to merge them in a little bit more at this bottom stage of the feather. Just so it looks a bit more feathery like, I suppose. What do we think of that one then? I'm liking the galaxy feather. Let's bring that out a bit. I don't want to do too much of the fiddly stuff because it is quite a nice clean shaped feather so we don't want to do too much. I'm loving the way that this, I think I need to do more with this. You can, I don't know how well it's going to work on this but you use to you probably still can yeah you only get small ones though so what i'm going to do i'm going to put some in a pot look because they're not alcohol based you can literally right i'm going to work from my desk actually so i'm just going to put some on my desk wet my brush pick it up with the brush and then go straight on my paper pick it up straight on now for those again who have followed me for a little while you will know the answer to this but the wetter your brush is the larger your splats will be the drier your brush the smaller they will be I'm trying not to do it too hard because it ends up all up my, my office wall so I have to have a massive clean down every time I do one of these lives with the um, watercolour products. What I'm going to do, I'm going to turn my camera down so you can get a proper view. She's probably thinking a lot about what happened today. There you go. So let me zoom you out a tiny touch. That gives you much more of a truer... Oh, putting it right on the sploppy bit beneath her. So you can see how you can take an everyday, I say everyday, they're not, they are to the duck, they're everyday to the duck, but you can see how just taking a bit of inspiration from a feather and just copying the shape and then just having fun and playing with it can, one, loosen you up, two, introduce you to a new medium that maybe you didn't even know where to start and these are just fun little techniques really for you to have a go at so we've had a go at that one so so far we have splats all over my desk 
So we've done these so far. So you've got two very, very different styles, but done with very, very similar techniques. So the next one we're going to do is let's go with, I'll tell you what. We've got that one. We've got another spotty one. Let me turn the lighting back up. And I hear pitter patter again. You need to stay that end, please, young lady. Okay. So, should we try? I don't know, actually. Oh, I don't know what one to do next. Too many choices. We could have a go at doing something more natural and doing the owl's feather. That's quite nice. Yes, let's do that actually. I'm gonna try a different technique. Um, let's do that and then we'll maybe do something a bit more chunkier. So we'll possibly do those two next. Okay, for those of you who didn't log on at the beginning, um, just as we drove literally onto the driveway outside my house, my uh, passenger side window exploded all over me and it completely freaked the kids out as you can imagine and Emily my youngest has um, autism sensory processing disorder and um, developmental coordination disorder so she suffers quite a lot with um, sensory input and things like that so having this massive explosion going on all over mummy I mean, it practically filled the car. Um, as you can imagine, pretty much freaked her out for an eight-year-old. So I can imagine it's probably going to be a very up and down night for them both tonight. So you may get a few more interruptions. So I do apologise about that. I have got a colour called Pink Champagne, which I'm really, really tempted to use. The Pink Champagne... Do you want a bit of glitter? Shall we leave it plain? I'll let you decide while I draw the feather out. Either glitter or plain. You let me know. And I shall choose the colour from there. Let's get it drawn out. So we're going to do the owl feather. So if we do it in the same... Let's do a larger one. Let's see if I can get it all in. Actually, let's not do a larger one. Let's go up here. Let's get that middle in. And let's make this really fine at the top. In fact, it could probably thin out a lot quicker. There. I will do. I've never heard her scream like that, in all honesty. She um, she said to me, I'm going to have to take my jumper off. Sorry, guys. I'm not doing a strip tease. I promise. I'm just really, really hot. Um, yeah, she said she thought someone had shot at the car. So she was really scared. Um, but we were sat in the cafe today at a garden centre that we like to go around and um, she asked me how long she will have autism for and uh, she wasn't expecting the answer to be forever so she's had a really really hard tough day bless her so we've going it's very oval so it's quite almost and then we've got a dip in here. I'm trying not to go too far out because I'm trying to, I'm stingy with my paper. I'm trying to get as many on as one piece of paper as I can. Um, okay, and we've got a bit of a, well, all the way down actually in this section. So we've got like a, a chunk here, then a V. darken it so you can see a bit better 
glitter. I am tempted with the glitter, I have to say. And then we've just got a little bit of fluff out here. Fluff out this way. Now what we're going to do, and then we've got loads of fluff that comes up from here. We've got loads of fluff that comes up from here. And then it turns into more of a solid feather. Now, where it's got the white mottling, I've, I don't take it out the bag, but where it's got that white mottling, I'm going to leave that as plain paper. Um, so we're going to use the trick of only putting the water where we want the colour to be. So I don't know why I'm moving it because I need it in front of me. So we want, if we're going glitter then, I'm going to go the pink champagne because I've got that pot out already. Yeah, she was having a sensory day anyway, so it was really, really tough. But having that on top of it. So, yeah, it's been a, been interesting. It's something so simple because it was literally out of the blue. There was no cause for it. But, it, yeah, it completely freaked her out. Okay. Let's get as much of that purple. My dirty cup is now my clean cup. And my clean cup it seems to now be the dirty cup, which is really annoying. But hey ho. What I'm going to do is because I need to be quite fine in the detail, is I'm going to use my smaller brush. This is number four, I think. The numbers rubbed off. Pretty sure it's a four. The other one's a six. No, the other one's a two, so this must be a one. Okay. Shows why now. So you don't want your brush too wet, but I'm going to just. Be pretty sporadic. Yeah, that's that word again. And I'm just pushing down and then lifting or pushing towards just to give it a bit of a stripey feeling. You don't want to work too slowly either because it will start to soak into your paper fairly quickly. So if we work now on what we've done... All I'm going to do is just tap a bit of colour into those areas. Got none there. Let me just zoom you in so you can see how it spreads. You don't need a lot. I've literally only dipped into that pot once and that was at the beginning. So we're going a little bit more along the more of a natural feel on this one. So we're just keeping any white space we need to keep white dry. We're just not putting any water or ink or watercolour on it. in that one I can't know how I've managed to get purple there but hey so you can see what little work needs actually going into these and they're so um effective you imagine framing a couple of these up and having them in your hallway or in your living room so we're more solid color down here so i'm going to wash the color i don't want the color to be really strong so i'm just going to wash that color right down and use that on either side So 
So while it's still wet, we're going to get our thinner brush. I'm really annoyed. I can't find my lining brush. No, you're not that one. Thinner brush. There we go. Get all the purple off. And then again, we're going to just pull. Hopefully you can see. Let me see if we can change the camera angle a bit, actually. Oh, you've lost me now, haven't you? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I moved the camera, I touched it, I dared to get involved in technology, how dare I? Gonna work? Right, there we go. Ah, plastic. Okay, I've moved it so you can get a better angle, hopefully. And then again, I'm just gonna flick up It is quite fluffy, so I'm just going to, again, just different varying angles and motion. I've said it in the past, if you're a Patreon, you know what I'm like with not having things straight like little soldiers. Things do go in different directions. And then again, this side as well. little ones now what you can do is while it's wet if you want to strengthen that color at all you can go back to your pot your color your ink and just add more color and just let it do its thing got air bubbles from where I shook it Again, if you want to, if you're finding the strength isn't becoming strong enough, you just need to let it dry for a little bit um, just to give it a bit of time to settle. And then you can go and add your colour on top of that if you want it even darker. Um, watercolour is exactly the same as pencil or pen. You have to layer. Okay, so we've got lots of fine ones that come off the side. And we're just going to bring them up. It's not until you get up to the very top that it starts to curve into less of a messy if you want to go in and add a little bit more here and there on the inside feel free and I am quite tempted to get the brown out just to add a bit of depth because it's very flat at the moment and you want a bit of depth really you need a bit of contrast If I grab my smoked quartz, oh, or shall I? No, the spun gold was too yellow. So I'm just going to grab my smoked quartz. And because I don't want a huge amount, please don't do this on anything that is going to soak colour up. I'm only scribbling on my desk because I know that my desk, I can wipe it off. Oof, oof, later. So we're going to add a bit of depth in here and you'll see that it's already feathering out so the colours merging in really nicely which gives you a much softer look on your feathers. But it gives it a bit more punch when you have contrast. You want to blend it out just make it a bit wetter i feel like i'm doing nothing but talking so apologies if it's irritating but 
as I say, if you've got any questions, just ask. Okay, I want to get some more. It's easier to do it. I'm going to turn the page. I'm probably going to be off camera a little bit, but it's easier for me to get the motion if I'm going the other way. I know it sounds stupid, but that's just me. Okay, so we can then work our way up. We can just add a little bit of... detail on these so again it adds a little bit more depth a bit more contrast hopefully you can see that If you're watching from any of the Spectrum groups and you have a go, I'd love to see. So make sure you share in the groups. I'll tell you what I do need to do is I need to line. Trusty glove. go just get that all the way up you can just put a bit of interest up here not great using this size brush for this type of job because it doesn't hold a huge amount of water so you have to keep going backwards and forwards but I'd rather do it incrementally than go in and ruin the whole thing what I might even do is just bring it out so it gets lighter each sort of section you go up and then you can fade it out Some little bits of detail in a bit of interest. Good, I'm glad you're finding it. As long as you gleam information out of it and maybe a bit of confidence to have a go, then that's me happy. Soften this bit down a bit, really. Let's grab some of that and use it to our advantage. If you're gleaming information and you think you're going to have a go, whack that thumbs up button. It'd be lovely to see how many of you are going to give this a try. Let's do... It gets quite tight on detail at the top, so I might just bring a little bit of detail up the top here. Again, I'm going to be just all over the place with it. I'm not going to be detailed as such or I don't know what am I looking for a word I'm not going to worry too much about it looking perfect Come on. my 
let's zoom out as we've got to zoom out to make sure anything looks good. Right, I'm going to do one sweep of my brush over. And what it's going to do is it's going to pick up some of the colour. I say one, I've done more than one, so ignore that. But it keeps the rest of it really light. So it's got colour on it, but it's not oversaturated with colour. So that's sort of the final look, which I think is quite nice. What are we up to? One hour 30. think I think we're going to do one more and then my head's telling me that I probably shouldn't do any more so we've done a more naturally looking one we've done our galaxy one I'm loving that galaxy and then we've got our sort of technique one I'm trying to think what other technique What other technique can I show you? Is there a technique that you've seen or heard of or want to know of? Let me know very quickly while my brain is trying to figure out what we're going to be doing. Okay. The Dale Rowney brushes from... Um, Hobbycraft are two quid each. I think the most expensive two pound fifty. Actually, I think the price has gone up, which is a little bit annoying. But they're really good value for money. They're really good quality brushes. They work across all your mediums, so you don't have to have really expensive brushes. But I do recommend that you have at least two sizes. So ideally, I generally work with a six and a two. Um, if you're doing large spaces, then a 10. Um, where are mine? So to give you an idea, this is a 4. So you could use a 4 if you wanted to. And this is a 6. So these are the two that I tend to use the most. And then if I have large areas, I will use my 10. Um, but maybe just get a 10 and a 4. Because you don't need to have a huge collection of brushes to begin with. Just get yourself two or three quality um, they're Daily Rowney graduate and they don't look like this. They look nice and clean when they're in the uh, the shop. But they're really good kit to have and you can get a lot done with them. So as I say, two quid, you're looking at less than a tenner for three quality brushes to work with your products. So it's worth, worth getting some. This one, the more natural one. I haven't drawn down there. <gasps> How bad of me. Um, bah, 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 bah. Oh, let's be really naughty. And it probably won't suit with the colour, but hey ho. There we go. Done. Okay, so let's, yeah, let's do one more. I'm trying to think of the technique. I think the galaxy is my favourite. Yeah, I'm really loving that galaxy. I mean, that has magpie and glittery duck written all over it, doesn't it? I think it's come out really, really nicely. Erica, this is the glove, by the way. I don't know what they're called. Um, but you saw how easy it was for me to glide. And that's exactly why I have it. Because when you've got skin on paper, it can be a little bit juddery. Um, but when I have this on and I'm doing marker work or I'm doing steady watercolour, it's really nice to just smoothly glide. Right, come on then. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Are we going to do one like this? Or are we going to do... Should we do one like this? Let's do one like this. And make it as loose as possible. Okay, I'm going to do this with no drawing. That's what we're going to do. I am I am going to keep it brown and green. 
saying that, I don't think I cleaned my desk. I did clean my desk off. Right, I'm just putting some ink in the little pot here that I said I had. And squeeze. And squeeze. I don't know that the brown and the green is going to work particularly effectively together, but hey, we'll soon find out. I'm going to use my number 16. Uh, I, it's not a round brush. It's not a filbert brush. Was it a filbert brush, actually? I have to try and remember all the names. This is one of my favourite large brushes because... I'm going to see if this works, actually. We've got to experiment here. I'm going to see... I'm going to try and get some ink down the side. I don't think it's long enough. Uh, no, it's not. Okay, I'm going to grab one half in the green, one half in the brown, one half green, one half brown. And I'm just going to make a mess to see if it works, which it does. Okay, so let's Oh God, I can't remember which colour was on what side now. That works. Right, let's get a clean piece of paper. It has, but I can't remember what it's called. It is like an anti... They're specially made for people that work on digital like um, pads drawing pads and things like that um that's what they're designed for um oh they're an anti what is it when you anti-friction anti-friction glove i think what does the little come from sorry little pot little pot uh this little pot or am i thinking of something else or this little pot okay I have no idea how this I don't know how much ink I've got left and I've lost my feather it's there okay so we need to go around like that and then I'm gonna flip it so the browns on the other side and then we're gonna go around Grab the tip. I'm just gonna play. Love it. The first, this one, I'm gonna do one at a time because the delay is ridiculous. Do you know what? It's just a really cheap storage thing. I got. I don't know where or when. I got it yonks ago. Again, you can pick them up from. Um, if you're in the States, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, anywhere like that, is literally just a little storage pot. That's all it is. It's just that I use it to put the inks in um, or if I'm doing acrylics because I can just put the lid on and it keeps them moist. It's looking like a shrimp at the minute. Okay, so we can now, I'm going to try and use the same brush. So you saw that sweep motion I had. I'm just going to use the same brush and just get a little bit of fluff this is why i love these brushes but these are not cheap these ones i'm just going to give it more feather detail you can see how it's divided on my brush that i've got these really fine tips so i can use that to my advantage i really want to be flicking out but And then we've got quite a lot of fluff around the bottom here. So ideally I want a different colour for the fluff. But I don't know, for the sake of today I'm tempted to just... Let's 
Oh, decisions. I do hate them. I'm going to add more water onto my brush. I want it to be quite wet. And then I'm um, going to just keep it really wet and really loose down the bottom where it's at its fluffiest. So the point of doing today and doing this sort of thing with you was so you could see how just a simple, natural, quick motion can give you a much more, here we go again, organic feel to your painting. Um, so sometimes you just, and I've always said it, that's why I love doing watercolour because it's my opportunity for me to just let go because I'm always so tight when I'm drawing that I have to get in so much detail and so much information that I'm just constantly concentrating. When you when you do something like this, it just gives you that freedom to just relax with it and just, yeah, just be a bit freer with it really. So let's just, while we've got some ink on there, let's just feather out a little bit just to, again, we need some, we don't need it, but I'm going to put some going in the down direction. So once I've done this, uh, yes, Leslie, I totally agree. Um, I'm going to use what ink I've got. Get the merging in a bit more natural. And then we are going to grab, ideally you need a clean one, I don't have one, I'm going to use my baby wipe which isn't ideal. And just grab the excess. need to that's a bit strong of a blunt stop there okay we're just going to use get detail in there again it will dry very light you're barely going to see it but it's all the little bits that you add in afterwards that give it all the in intricacies I don't know why I keep leaning over I'm not going to put my coffee down mm. so if I show you we've done all of that I've not put my paintbrush back in the ink a single time and that is how much ink we still have. And I'm still getting that divide of colour. And that's actually saying that. I wonder, while well, that's drying. Um, A little leaf in there. <laughs> Bloody hell. Anyway, go back. So that's it compared to what we've done. Obviously, that's a lot greyer than what I've done. I've literally just picked a few colours to play with today. Um, now I want it to have that mottle effect in there because I like it. So I'm going to wet my brush. And I'm not going to put 
any up here i want it just to be down there's the odd one that's gone up there i just want to give it that mottle effect just grab oh, it's done it anyway once that's dry i then draw the whatever it's called up through the middle and it will join the whole lot together so again that that took a matter of seconds to get the sweeping motion just get yourself a load of before you go and spend it on the lovely spectrum wire paper just get yourself a load of cheap watercolor paper or mixed media paper even and just practice little motions with your brush and the mix of doing half and half and yeah just experiment with it and and have fun with it because doing something like feathers is just a really nice way of relaxing i cannot believe the time delay between us both it's ridiculous and not a single refresh has had to happen which means that my bitrate is working perfectly so thank you for that Mr. IT man. Right, it's still a bit wet, so I'm going to have to wait for that to dry. So while it's drying, I'm going to fan it a little bit. Have you got any questions? Oh, look, actually. God damn it. Why do I always see something? I was mucking about making a stupid feather up here, but these are feathers already. Look. Look at that one. I love that. I'm really tempted to plug my hair dryer in just to get it to dry. That's dry, it's down here that's not. I want to show you what I mean. Let's grab. This is my bamboo illustrator. You do need to keep your feathers. So I'm going to use the illustrator and I'm going to use the brush nib. I'm going to practice on this one because I want to start nice and fine and then I want to increase my pressure as I go down and then I want to come up. I think that works fine. I'm wondering if I need a brown rather than the bamboo. Let me try. Red brown is probably too light. Ooh, no, it might be all right. Let's try the red brown on this one. No, red brown's fine. Okay, so I'm using red brown RB2. So we've got a set of four feathers just sitting here waiting. So we're going to, is my hand in the way, can you see? We're going to start off light. Again, this is why I need this glove. I'm going to start off light. Right on the tip. And then we're just going to apply a little bit of pressure as we go down, all the way down to the bottom. And then we're going to flick up. Like it. I'm going to do a little bit like the other feather and veer off because the other one veered off, didn't it? It wasn't perfectly central. Oh, I've got stuck then. That one's still a bit wet, so we're going to go onto this end one. And we're going to start about here. And again, a bit of pressure as we go down. I've probably made these a bit too long, but when I have a play in a minute. Let's stop a bit sooner. I'm loving these. Look, I just total fluke actually that 
No, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Right, I filled my inking pen with water first. Then I've gone in with the brown. Even that might be too strong. That's better. It's a bit weaker now. I've worked my way through it a little bit. I'm a little bit in love with these which oh, I don't know why I keep doing that um but it just goes to show how what was literally just an experiment or to show you how much was on left on my brush has actually turned into a full-blown bunch of feathers little bit of strength on that one happy little accidents absolutely i was thinking it looks a bit like lollipops with this <laughs> bits being so uh long at the bottom these happy little feathers killing off little happy birds Coffee. I need coffee. Once this is done, I'm just going to soften them a little bit with some water. Ideally, I probably, if I'd thought about it, should have done um, one half green and one half the brown. So I'm just going to grab a tiny bit of water and then just soften them a little touch. Emerging a little bit then rather than being quite so stark. when we zoom out we have a beautiful little collection there of feathers up to you if you wanted to add detail but yeah that that was just one sweep of that brush damn it i could have got that on video from the uh, fireworks Look at them aren't they cute i really like them anyway you can add as much or as little detail to them if you want but yeah they were literally happy little accidents okay so moving on to that it's still quite damp but it's probably dry enough for me that's really annoying because there's something up here that shouldn't be there grab so the end of the whatever it's called really full of technical terms in fact i'm going to sweep around i'm using my little finger to stop the back of my hand hitting the 
desk because I don't want to apply too much pressure and just using my little finger one helps guide me and two stops too much pressure being applied to the brush. too thick down the bottom here but too late to do anything now or is it can we be sneaky brushing there you go that just softens it a little bit lights hitting in the wrong place you've got height a light bounce there but it's not it should be more even I'm going to give it a little bit of a end as such just so it doesn't look quite so lost but actually I think that's pretty much there I don't think that needs anything else uh, Da Vinci if you're on your phone Leslie take a screenshot if it's easier um, can you see that I'm going to pause it there for you to take a screenshot. So Da Vinci, I don't think they're all Cassano, Cassanino, that's the electric moaning at us. Yeah, they are Cassani, Cassanio, Cassanio. So yeah, there you go. You can do that with standard brushes as well, but you need more of a filbert shape rather than... I have got a filbert somewhere, but it's not in that lot. Well, I'm rather liking that one. I have to say, I like the paper, the dry technique. It's happened there, so please share if you have a, if you have a go. I'd love to see it. So you then got your pretty little accidents. We've got our galaxy. And then we have our little simple dotty ones. So hopefully you've enjoyed tonight's live tutorial. If you have, I'd love a thumbs up. If you're new to me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, YouTube made a bit of a mess up and they undid everybody's uh, notifications. So you need to hit the notification bell for all to make sure that you get notified every time I go live and a new video is up. Um, there is a whole series of Spectrum Noir Classic um tutorials coming up that will be they're not live they're just videos that are coming up and i go live every wednesday so have a good morning evening afternoon whichever it may be and i shall see you guys on the other side bye